everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, but this one is unlike no other. Well, it's like one other that we have on the channel. It's Lionel Johnson. Yes, here he is. The lion has returned to the 41st millennium, and Games Workshop have sent me this early to paint up for all of you, and I cannot wait to get started. It's an absolutely stunning miniature coming with four different head options. And as you can see, I've gone for the bare-faced with the hood because, well, it's the coolest one. You can fight me on it if you want, but it is the coolest one, I promise. <laughs> anyway, he's been primed in white scar and we're not gonna beat him out the bush any longer. We're just gonna jump into it. Now, the color we're gonna be using first is a roughly two to one mix of Black Legion and Contrast Medium. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of all of the lion's armor. However, we are just going to be avoiding, no we're not, we're not going to be avoiding anything. We're going to be applying this over all of his armour, every single bit. Now the reason we've gone for that two to one is that we're going to kind of introduce a little bit of a kind of slightly weaker Black Legion here. So it's going to kind of come off with a bit of a grey, greyish brown finish, but that is okay. That's exactly what we want because we're going to be going over the top of it with a really cool mix to make it really, really dark. So you just want to get this over all of it. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one mix of Contrast Medium, Achillean Green and Black Legion. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the armour. So with that done, we've got some beautiful sort of slightly tealy tinted black armor. Now, rather than finish that off, what we're going to do is going to move on to the next color. Not for very long, but we are going to move on to the next color, which is going to be Skeleton Horde. And we're going to apply this in two places for now. We're going to apply this along the inner skirts of this one here. And we're going to apply this to the inside of his cloak. Now, we're not going to apply this to the inside of this one the kind of second one, because that's going to be a slightly different color, just to create a bit of variation. So we're going to take the skeleton horde on our brush, and we're going to start on the outside around here, and we're going to get right in here and start applying this. We don't want loads because we don't want to have kind of significantly dark brown spots like that one there. So do just move it about.
just like this. So with that skeleton hoard applied, we're then gonna take some thinned down Morgast bone. I'm gonna use this on the flat sections of the cape. So with that Morgast bone applied, we've now got our skeleton hoard here, our Morgast bone in there, and now we're going to take some Seraphim sepia, and I'm going to apply this to the inside of our other skirt. And again, you really don't need very much here. I'm just looking to tint it. So with that done, we've got all of our bone on. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the green cloak and then we're going to shade it all, highlight it all, get all of that bit done and then we can just work on all of the fine details. So the color we're going to make is a roughly two to one mix of Carandrus green and contrast medium. And we're going to be applying this over the top of the back of the cloak, so this big one here. We're applying it over this skirt in here. We're going to be applying this over the top of the cloth coming up underneath here and around here. Over the top of the hood, a little bit of cloth in there and a little bit of cloth right up under there, which you can't really see. So anyway, we're going to take this Carandra screen and we want to get a nice smooth coat here. And this is going to be one of the trickiest parts. Yeah, absolutely spot on. So we're going to start just here. And this is just why we got it thinned down. And don't worry if you get this on the other details, that's okay. And so with that done, we're then gonna do the exact same thing again. Roughly two parts Carandrus green to one part contrast medium mix. So with that now done, we're then going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to two parts orc flash to one part dark angels green. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the green once again. This is going to be the hardest part because we've got the dark angels green involved now.
And so with that now done, the green's nearly there. We just need to add one more layer. And I know it's a lot, but it's a very, very unique green that he's got. So the last layer that we're gonna add is some bale tan green. And we're just gonna use this over the top. Just like this. So with that Beltan green applied, as you can see, it's still drying at the moment, but that's okay because what we're gonna do is we're gonna to return to painting the bone. Now, the color we're gonna be using first is we're gonna be using a roughly two parts more gas bone to one part screaming skull mix. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of our wide open areas. Like this. And we're going to leave a little bit of the more gas bone. That we originally did. Well, I mean, that we re layered with. And with that done, we're then going to do a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Screaming Skull and more gas Bone. I'm going to do this a lot narrower than what we just did. So, for example, on this large fold just here. Like that. And then we skip over into the next one. Apply it like that. And with that done, we're then going to finish off the outer cape using some Screaming Skull on its own. And again, we're going for a really wide, soft, folds in this cloak. We're still showing those previous two or three coats. So with that now done, the outer cloak is finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to once again take Screaming Skull and on the lowest cloak we're going to do much the same thing as we've done before and then we're going to do quite a wide layer here
And with that now done, we're then going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Screaming Skull and Pallid Witch Flesh. And we're going to do a much narrower. There, like that. And we're going to do a full layer of this all over the top of the one that we did the Seraphim Sepia on. And then finally, just to finish off these cloaks, well, the in the parts we're going to take some pallid witch flesh we're just going to use this to highlight them alongside the sharp edges so with that done the inner cream cloaks are now all finished the outside of the green is at the perfect colour, but the inner green, so this is on him, is not quite right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Creed camo and we're going to apply this over the top. Just like this. So with that green camo applied, we're gonna leave the green alone for a little bit. We're gonna stop painting cloth. And what we are in fact gonna do is work on the armor next. Uh, so the color we're gonna be using first to highlight this is Vulcan Green. I'm just going to pick out all of the edges. So with all that Vulcan green applied, it's not a particularly strong highlight, but that's exactly what we want because now what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Cyberite green and we're going to apply this as our next highlight over the top of the armor, only we're going to be doing a little bit less. So we want the Vulcan green to be kind of the body of the highlight and we want the Cyberite green to be where we want the sort of light to start catching. So we're going to be picking out kind of the sharp, sharper light reflecting points.
So with that Cyberite green applied, we're then gonna take some Gorse Blaster green. And we're gonna add this to the sharpest corners around his armor. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and griff charger gray. And we're going to apply this all over the top of the black armor and over the top of our highlights. And this is going to kind of turn that green into a more kind of grayish green. So it's going to add a little bit more depth to the black. It's going to look awesome. And so with that, John, just to really make it pop off, we're going to grab a tiny little dot of blue horror. I'm just going to apply this literally on those kinds of corners. As you can see, the Griff Chargers taking the edge off that green. So now, simply adding a little dot of blue horror. Just creates that real piece of shine. So with that now done, all of the armor is now finished. So we're gonna move on to the green now, and we're gonna start on the inner works of his green, so his hood and his kind of inner cloaks and stuff. And then we're gonna move on to the actual cloak itself, this one back here. So starting off with our inner green, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a roughly three parts warpstone glow to one part Caliban green mix. And we're gonna use this to essentially smooth out any problems that we might have so I know that on this hood, for example, I've got a little bit of a patchiness problem going on. So I'm just going to apply this. Like this. Over the top. Of the flat areas. Of the hood. Just avoiding any dark recesses, but ultimately just smoothing out any other problems that I don't like. And so with that done, we're now going to take Warpstone Glow on its own, and we're going to use this to start highlighting the hood and the inner cloth. And so with that now done, we're then going to take some moot green and we're going to use this to highlight the hood
like this. We're going to use this to highlight the leather, well, the inner cloth. And I'm going to use this to highlight the cloak. So with that now done, we're then going to take some iron rack skin. I'm going to use this as a little spot highlight, particularly on the hood. It's pretty much the only place on the internal workings where you need to do this. Just going to add a couple of little dots. And that sort of thing. However, on our cloak, with the iron rack skin. We're gonna go over the top of all of our highlights and we're gonna be much narrower here. So with that now done, the inner green is finished. So we're gonna just add a next highlight to the outer green on the cloak. And this is going to be some deep kin flesh. This is where we're gonna be doing some really, really tiny little narrow highlights. More of a spot highlight here. So with that done, just to finish off the cloak, we're gonna take a roughly five parts contrast medium to one part dark angels green mix. And we're gonna apply this all over the top. It's a little kind of glaze type thing. Just to tie all of our highlights, all of our layers together. So with that done, it is now finally time to move on to some new details.
is already looking pretty fantastic. I'm very, very pleased. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to all of the gold. Now there's a lot of this and you really will need to have the kind of box art and things open in front of you to do this because there's so much gold all over him. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down retributor armor. And we're going to start applying this over the top of all of these details, just being careful around all of the other ones. Now, bits that aren't gold are the kind of two shields up here on the back. But one other thing to point out is that for the front of the shield, even though it's going to be red, we want this to be a nice deep metallic red. So we're going to apply the gold over all of the bits that are going to be gold, but we're also going to apply this over the top of the body of the shield. So pretty much going for a full coat of Retributor armor. Apart from that, you just want to have the product photography or the box art open in front of you and just get cracking with this Retributor armor all over. So with all of that Retributor armor applied, as you can see, what I've also done is I've gone around and I've neatened up all of our splodges and mistakes with some white, as you can see with the cross swords here on his knee pad, for example. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Flesh Terror's red and we're gonna move on to our red details. Now this is going to include Areas such as the belt, the soft grip on his sword, Just like this. And what we're also going to do with the red is we're going to use this on this winged insignia here on, on his gauntlet. Like that. We do have the other half of the belt to do, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Uh, what we're also going to do with the Flesh Terror's Red is, as previously mentioned, is we're going to apply this over the top of the field of the shield. And don't worry if you do get this on any of the bits that are going to be gold. That's okay. You can just take some Retributor armor and tidy it up. And so with that done, we're then gonna shade these three areas, the bit on the gauntlet, the belt, and the red on the shield with some Drooky Violet. So that Drooky Violet applied just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the leather of the gun holster 
and over the internal workings of the shield. So with that now done, we're going to take some wildwood. I'm going to use this in two different ways. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take small amounts of this wildwood and I'm going to apply this over the top of our belt, which I know we've already shaded and done red for, but we want this to be a really, really dark red. We don't want too much here, because if we have too much, it'll just become, well, basically black, and we don't want that. Just want to take a really small amount. It's almost too much just there. I'm just going to apply this in like that. Then, similarly, with the wildwood, what we're going to do is just take really small amounts of this. I'm going to add a little bit of a kind of blended shading to our shield. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to take again just a small amount of this. I'm going to apply some in this corner, like this, coming under that star. I'm going to bring it out like that. I'm going to wash the brush. And then I'm going to lift some of that paint off and move it around to create a little bit of shading, a little bit of a blend, a little bit more wildwood into that corner. And just that one there, like so. Then we're going to do the same thing around the eagle's head, so just around here. So you add some like this, coming around like that. Going to wash the brush. Just going to smooth it out. I'm going to add some pretty dark shading just in here on this little bit. So we're just going to add a little bit of wildwood in there, like that. And then just around the bottom as well, I'm going to take some of the wildwood and paint it all over. Like that. I'm going to wash the brush. And I'm just going to lift most of it off down there while smoothing out the transitions. So you should have a pretty red patch just here. Just down there. And right in there as well. Like so. So with that wildwood applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on to our next colour. We will do some corrections on the gold, but I won't film that because, well, you've already seen me do it. So the next colour we're going to use is Skeleton Horde, and we're going to apply this over top of all of the parchment scattered around Mr. Johnson. It's got a purity seal there. We've got one just down here. You want to do, make sure you don't forget to do the inside of them as well, including this one up all the way up there. You probably can't see that on camera, but that is the same one as up here. I'm going to apply some of this over these purity seals just here.
like that. Now we've got parchment on his shoulder as well. I think that's it. Nope, we've got one more. And with that now done, we're going to take some Sigvald Burgundy and we're going to apply this over top of all of the wax seals on all of the purity seals. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Rune Lord Brass and we're going to apply this over two areas. Firstly, we're going to apply this over top of these sections on his backpack. Like that sort of thing. And we're also going to apply this over the top of the creature. In the eagle's mouth. shield like that and over the top of its tail so with that now done we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of skeleton horde and cassandora yellow and we're going to apply this over the top of the lion pelt Like this. What we are going to do is we're going to avoid the kind of inside skin of the lion. So we've got one bit around here, for example, whereas this one is what would be fur. See this one's folded over. So what you want to do is you want to apply this to this little bit. Like that. And you want to bring it just under there. Like that. And then you want to do the underside. including that bit. And that bit there. And whilst we've got it out, we might as well use the skeleton horde on the lion's beard. And if you've got him barefaced, you want to do this on his hair as well.
So with that done, we're now going to take some Apothecary White. We're going to apply this over top of all of the white details. And so with that apothecary white all applied, we're then going to take some Gilliman flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of the lion's face. And so with that now done, we're going to take two colours, Reichland Flesh Shade and Gore Grunt of Fur, and we're going to apply these onto the lion's pelt. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Reichland Flesh Shade and we're going to apply this over the top of the whole thing. Just like this. I'm just avoiding the tail just for the moment because there is a reason for that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're also going to be applying the Reichland Flesh Shade over the top of that bit of skin that we miss before. Along here. like that and then similarly oh, we've got this bit here that we didn't do we can bring it all the way down the tail like that we're going to wash the brush I'm going to grab a tiny amount of Gore Grunter fur. I'm going to add this towards the tip of the tail, just whilst the Reichlin Fresh Shade is still wet. Like that. Wash the brush one more time. Grab a little stronger amount of Gore Grunter fur, and then add this towards the very tip of the tail like that. If you need to smooth it out, you can wash the brush and grab a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade and just tie things together. What we will also do with the Gore Grunt of Fur is we will apply this to the talons or claws Just like that. And we're also going to apply a small amount of this over the toe beans. And so with that Reichland Flesh Shade and Gore Grunter Fur applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down Iron Hand Steel. And we're gonna apply this over the top of, well, pretty much all of our remaining details.
So we've got some of the kind of inner workings of the shield, like the handle and such. We've got the fins on his back. And of course, we've got the sword just here. Forgive me, but there is one last thing to do, which is to take some orc flesh. I'm going to apply this over the top of the robe on the angel on the shoulder pad. So with that orc flesh applied, we now have all of our base coats on on the lion. So now it's time to add a couple of shades. Now the first one we're gonna add is Gilliman flesh. And we're gonna be applying this over top of all of the gold and over the top of the Rune Lord brass. So with all of that Gilliman flesh applied, I bet you were worried it wouldn't make an appearance. Well, don't worry, it's here. We're gonna be using Agrax Earthshade next. And we're gonna be using this to shade the silver on the backpack. like so, and we're gonna use this over the top of the Rune Lord Brass on the shield. And so with that Agrax shade applied, we're then gonna take some Griff Charger Grey. I'm gonna use this to shade the sword blade and the gun at his hip. So with that done, Lionel Johnson is now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. I mean, he's obviously not right because we've gone quite a bit further than battle ready already, but I pay myself royalties every time I say it. So I've got to get it in there. <laughs> anyway, what we're gonna do now is gonna work on taking him to the next level. And we're gonna do that by adding a series of layers and some highlights. Now, the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna work on all the gold. And the color we're going to be using first is once again Retributor Armor. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick out any large open spaces of gold. So for example, on the shield, we've got the edge like that. That one there that we want to get nice and bright once again. Now we don't want to do the inside track of the uh, shield because well, we want that to be nice and deeply shaded. But for the eagle on the front, we're gonna add some of this Retributor armor over the top of the flat parts, just avoiding anywhere where our Gilliman flesh has really settled.
like that sort of thing. We're also going to do this on this shoulder pad. And we're going to do this on the iron halo. And on the lion. Uh, And so with that Retributor armor applied, we're then going to take a roughly two to one mix of Stormhost Silver and Retributor armor. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the gold. So with that all done, the gold is all finished. And it really starts to come to life, as you can see. Got that lovely, gorgeous shine going on. So what we're gonna do is move on to the next color, and that's gonna be the belt. Now the color we're gonna be using to highlight this is Bugman's Glow. So with that Bugman's Glow applied, what we then do is we move on to the red and the gauntlet. And the color we're gonna be using to highlight this is Wild Rider Red. So with that Wild Rider Red applied, what we're then gonna do is take some Pink Horror. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our wax seals. So with that pink horror applied, we're now gonna take some thinned down Dawnstone and we're gonna use this to highlight the leather on the gun holster. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down white scar and we're gonna use this to highlight all of our white details. So with that white scar all applied, as you can see, these white details are finished. He's really starting to come together and he's really gonna start coming together now because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down screaming skull and we're gonna use this to highlight a lot of different details. So we're gonna be using this to highlight all of the parchment.
just like that sort of thing. We're going to use this to highlight the lion's fur parts of the pelt. And I'm going to use this to highlight his beard. So with that screaming skull applied all over, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Blade One Flash. I'm going to use this to highlight his face. So with that flayed one flesh applied, we're then going to take a really small amount of Black Legion. I'm going to apply this over the top of his eyeballs. And so with that Black Legion then applied, I'm going to take a really tiny little dot a screaming skull. You want to apply this in the corners. Of his eyeballs. Just like that. So with that done, his face is now finished. So what we can do is move on to our Rune Lord Brassy areas. Now, we're going to work on these ones first. We're not going to work on the ones on the shield because, well, we're going to skip this step on them just for the moment. But what we are going to do is we're going to once again take Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to use this to relayer these flat open spaces. And so with that Rune Lord Brass applied, we're then going to use some Canoptic Alloy to highlight all of our Rune Lord Brass details. So these bits on the back, as well as the ones on the shield. So with that now done, it's time to work on the sword. And well, the color we're gonna be using first for this, nice and simply, is some thinned down iron breaker. And we're gonna apply this over the top of the sword blade. Like this. Just avoiding. Those recesses. Whilst we're waiting for the sword to dry, we're also going to use some thin down iron breaker over the top of the wings on his backpack. So now that that iron breaker is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to use Griff Charger Grey once again. And we're going to be applying this along this side of the sword blade. And we're not going to be going along the whole thing. What we're going to do is we're going to bring it down from up here to around about three quarters of the way. So around about there. So we're going to take that Griff Charger Grey on our brush. We're going to start up here. Gonna 
bring it around to around about three quarters, just like that. I'm going to wash the brush. We're just going to smooth out the transition just a little bit so we don't get a hard drying line like that. And that's what we need to do just for the moment. So with our first layer of Griff Charger Grey done, we're then going to take more Griff Charger Grey. And we're going to do the same thing again over the top. We're just looking to build these layers up really, really gently. As you can see, that one's already a lot stronger. And we'll wash the brush. just smooth out the transition once again. And so with that done, for a third time, we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to do this once more over the top. We then wash the brush. Let me smooth it out. So with that now done, what we need to do is we need to do the same thing on the other side of the sword, only we're going to be using a roughly four parts null oil to one part black templar mix. And we're going to be doing the more towards the tip of the blade going up than we are towards the base of the blade. So we're going to apply this starting at the tip of the blade, coming up like that, and then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth out the transition. Just like that. So with that done once, we're then going to do the same mix again, four parts null oil to one part black templar. And we're going to do this more towards kind of the half from the tip. Like that. Wash the brush. And then smooth out the transition. And so with that done for a third time, we're then going to take the exact same mix again. I'm going to do this around about kind of where the tip of that is. Starting from the tip. Bring it up to there. Wash the brush. And from this direction, we're going to smooth out. Transition. So with that now done, we've got this beautiful kind of true metallic metal, non-metallic metal type thing going on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some thinned down iron breaker. We're going to use this to highlight all of the details and all the edges on the sword. So with that iron breaker all applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts frost heart to one part contrast medium mix. And we're going to apply this over the top of the power nodes, bring it down onto the blade a little bit on the right side and a little bit less on the left hand side. 
So we're going to apply this like this. So we're going to start right up here in the base. And apply this like that, bringing it up like so. We're going to wash the brush. And then I'm going to smooth out the majority of it there on that side. And then similarly on this side. Wash the brush. And then smooth out like so. So with that done, we've got a pretty cool looking sword. What we're going to do now is we're going to take some thin down Baharoth blue and we're going to apply this over the top of the nodes. Like that. And then we're also going to use this to highlight the bluest sections. So for example, here along this kind of power cable, we're going to add a little bit of a highlight going along about half of it. Same on that one. And then similarly on the actual blade itself. And so with that Baharoth blue applied, we're then going to take a tiny amount of white scar and add this on the tips of the diodes. Like that. And add a little bit of this. on the power cables and we have a tiny little bit going across the middle of our bluish highlights on the blade. So with that now done, just to finish off the sword blade, we're going to take some Stormhost Silver and use this to highlight the silver parts of the blade towards the sharpest edges. Just there at the tip. And along here. And across the tang. So with that now done, the sword blade is now finished. And it looks amazing. <laughs> so what we're going to do is move on to the rest of the silver details and we're going to highlight these using a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Iron Breaker and Stormhost Silver. So with that done, all the silver is now finished. So what we can do is we can take some frost heart and can apply this over the top of the gem. Just up there like that. And similarly to the frost heart, we can take some flesh terrors red and we can apply this into the other two gems. We've got one here. And one on his 
belt. So with that done, we then take a little dot of white scar. We apply this in the top right corner of both the gems. You don't need to do the one on the belt because it's really small. So with that white then applied, we then take a little bit of Wild Rider Red. We apply this as a highlight around the bottom curve of our red gem. And so with that Wild Rider Red applied to the red gem, we're then gonna take a little bit of Wildwood and apply this over the top of the red gem, just avoiding our red highlight and our white dot, like so. So with that done, just to finish him off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Wildwood I'm going to use this to draw in some little lines on the parchment. So with all of those little parchment writings done, I did actually do a couple of little extra symbols, but those are entirely optional. You, of course, can do whatever you like around there. It is now time to move on because the lion himself is now finished. Now we're going to move on to the Watchers in the Dark next. And the colour we're going to be using first is Sigvald Burgundy. And we're going to be applying this over the top of their robes. We need to pick a place to start. I'm going to start just in here on the knee. So we're just going to... Start layering this Sigval Burgundy all over. Just like this. So with that Sigval Burgundy all applied, we're then going to take some Drukey Violet and we're going to apply this over the top of all the Sigval Burgundy. So with that done, we're then going to take some Dark Angels Green and we're going to apply this over the top of this thing. This walking stick. So with that now done, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the leather of the scabbard. But we're also going to apply this over the robe of the statue that is placed front and centre on his base. So with that Black Legion all applied, we're then going to take some Gore Grunter fur and we're actually going to start applying this onto the base onto all the soil. I know I said we'd be doing the watches in the dark, but it just makes sense to do the base at the same time. So 
So with that Gorgrunter fur all applied, we're then going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the bones. Our statue. And we're going to apply this over the little feet. On our watches. And this hand. With that Agrax Earthshade applied, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde. We're going to apply this over the top of the parchment. well as their little rope belts. So with that skeleton horde all applied, we're then gonna take some flesh tear as red. I'm gonna use this to paint in the wax seals. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some black tampar and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the stone. So with that now done, we're going to take some thin down Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this to, well, there's a lot of gold detail. So we've got the top of his walking stick. And all the decoration on it. We've got a little Imperial Eagle. Got the decorative features on the scabbard. And we've got the pommel and the cross guard. On the sword. As well as the iron halo and the casing of the wings. So with all of that retributor armor applied, as you can see, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thin down iron hand steel. And we're going to apply this over all of our remaining details. So with that done, we've got all of our base coats now on on the lion's base. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some shades. Now the first one is going to be Gilliman Flesh, as we've already done this on the lion's gold. 
I'm gonna do this on his base's gold as well. And so with that Gilliman flesh all applied, we're then gonna take some Nulm oil and we're gonna apply this over top of all the silver and the black. So with that done, the base is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. But we're not going to highlight it just yet. We are going to do some highlights and you've seen all of the highlights before already. We're not going to be doing anything new uh, particularly to any of this stuff. But what we are going to do, because it is new, is we're going to be taking some Armageddon dust and we're going to apply this over the top of all the negative space surrounding the lion's mound upon which he stands. I know it's a completely different colour, but don't worry, we are going to sort that out. But this does mean you can have a good old rest now. If you want to leave this to dry for four or five hours. Now that all that Armageddon dust is dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Gore Grunter fur and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of the Armageddon dust and we're gonna apply a second coat over the top of the soil. So with that all done, he is now a war hipster battle ready on his base. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to do the highlights next. And as I've mentioned already, we've already covered all of these. So we're not going to film them too much in detail. But what we are going to do is we're going to start with the robes on our watchers in the dark. And the colour we're going to be using to highlight them is Bugman's Glow. So with that done, we're then going to take some Dawnstone and we're going to use this to highlight the black leather and the statue's robe. So with that now done, we're going to take some thin down iron hand steel and we're going to use this to highlight the silver and also relayer the silver on the statue. With that iron hand steel reapplied, we're then going to take some liberator gold. I'm going to use this to highlight all the gold. is slightly different to the lion but we don't want him the base to be as bright and impressive as he is so with that now done we're then going to take some thinned down screaming skull and we're going to use this to highlight the parchment and the bones as well as their little hand and feet So with that now done, believe it or not, we're very nearly there. What we're going to do next is we're going to take some wildwood, and this is kind of optional. And we're going to use this to draw in those little lines and checkerboards and various bits of script. On all the parchment. So with all of that text applied, 
to all of our purity seals, as you can see. What we're going to do now is we're going to finish it off by adding a very gentle dry brush of Tyrant Skull over the top of all of the base features, not over the top of the, the watches. And then after this, you can add some tufts. You have to paint in the rim of the base in the color of your choice. So here he is then, the lion all finished up and looking absolutely fabulous. A couple of things just to point out, I would recommend a sub-assembly, especially by leaving the cloak and backpack off and the two watches in the dark. It would make your life a lot easier. I wish I had done, but we were able to get him done and he looks absolutely fabulous. Probably one of my best. I say that every time, but this one definitely. Man, that sword, that cloak, the armor. Oh my goodness me, what a fantastic fantastic miniature if you enjoyed this video you love the channel and you'd like to support me further you absolutely can do so head to patreon.com forward slash war hipster just like these bosses have done scrolling up on the screen before you whose continued support helps me continue to make all the wonderful content that you enjoy Alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button on the channel page or just below this video like these wonderful, amazing people have done. And if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.